late January, while I was preparing my Q at Macworld 2012 talk about what to do about mobile tech invading our classrooms, ISTE's January issue of Learning and Leading, Volume 39.5, showed up at my doorstep, and BYOD, Bring Your Own Device, was discussed several times in the issue. My Macworld talk discussed how educators and institutions were dealing with students coming to school with potentially powerful technology in their pockets, and how they might take advantage of that scenario. In the Learning and Leading issue, uh, one of my former mentors, Dr. Gary Stagger, presented rather strong objections to BYOD that I'd like to address. Dr. Stagger was my professor when I was getting my master's degree at Pepperdine, and he's pretty well known for having strong opinions about what's wrong with how education has been managed over the past several decades. Dr. Stagger knows well what he preaches, having been associated with the legendary Seymour Papert. You may know all of this, so I apologize if I'm preaching to the choir, but in the early days when microcomputers were entering the classroom, MIT and Pappert studied the potential and in those early days determined that technology, due to its expense in time, support, and money, needed to deliver more than what was being promoted, stand-alone drill-and-kill stations. What they figured out was that if they taught students computer programming, then they would be teaching students three fundamental skills, communication, problem solving, and creative thinking. In those early days, the vision was to use computers to add to the educational experience in ways that weren't easily doable without computers. Alas, the technology market has tended to dumb down its potential in the classroom in search of faster, smaller, cheaper devices, forgetting the visions of Pappert. So let me address Stagger's objections. His first objection, BYOD enshrines inequity. Only way to guarantee equitable educational experiences requires same access for all students. To this I say policy versus practice. We want every student to have the same access. If BYOD were the only option, then yes, we're dealing with separate but equal foolishness. There's a difference between allowing for and supporting versus BYOD as the only option. BYOD creates false equivalencies between any object that happens to use electricity. Cell phones are not computers. To this, I totally agree. I think we've learned that there is a base level where technology is not value add, like having only one student PC in the classroom. BYOD needs something more powerful than a feature phone. We should not make important educational decisions based on price. Again, I totally agree. Stagger has had to contend with many a small-minded bureaucrat, so I understand his concern. BYOD should never fall victim to the, we don't need to fund this because we're taking care of it with BYOD, a la the California lottery foolishness. BYOD is an option, not an excuse, to not fund our educational system. BYOD narrows the learning process to information access and chat. Say no to looking up answers in PowerPoint. Yes. Beware of tacked on drill and kill lowest common denominator solution looking for a problem tech projects that have little to no effect on student learning. BYOD increases teacher anxiety. Schools have failed to encourage computer use um, after three decades. Again, yes. So on some level, we are taking matters into our own hands and finding working solutions like BYOD because sometimes waiting for administration to do something is a non-starter. Things change because small groups of enthusiasts find a way. Waiting for bureaucracy isn't the way. BYOD diminishes the otherwise enormous potential of educational computing to the weakest device in the room. Real computers provide an intellectual library and vehicle for self-expression limited by the least powerful device. Again, C phones aren't computers. There is a base level that doesn't work. It helps to remember that most smartphones have cap capabilities beyond the computers that took our astronauts to the moon in the 1960s and 70s. Don't underestimate what students and teachers can do with these devices. BYOD contributes to the growing narrative that education is not worthy of, an event of investment. To quote, democracy and high quality education systems require adequate funding. Note, 
the teacher, the tech coordinator with the latest hardware who decides that students can do with whatever. Let them eat cell phones, Staggert said. Agreed. Back to policy versus practice. We do this because we are actually bridging the gap between our students' experiences in the classroom and their world the rest of the time. Properly done, BYOD brings to the fore all the good educational practices of ownership, creativity, and learning that gets lost when education is limited to a one-size-fits-all bureaucratic solution. BYOD is an option. The thing that Stagger fears is not technology-related, but the decision-making processes or predilections towards out-of-date educational policies. In my Macworld talk, I noted a local school, Autobahn Park Elementary, where the principal actively supports teachers using technology brought from home because he's seen how student engagement has been elevated when instruction is more interactive and students are encouraged to communicate using the devices they are comfortable using. This didn't happen all at once, and it wasn't a bureaucratic decision, but was something that grew first with the ins installation of interactive Promethean boards and then with parent and community support. BYOD has been working at Audubon Park Elementary because it's part of the solution and not even necessarily the main part. The main part is educators, administrators, and the community finding ways to take advantage of the technology at hand to do the job of learning. Dr. Steger is correct with his concern if BYOD is institutionalized and there is an ex expectation that educators to cobble together classroom technology that should otherwise be supported by districts to provide appropriate learning environments. But educators and administrators who use BYOD to innovate and take advantage of possible available technology should not be made to feel like they're running a fool's errand. It's a two-edged sword where districts and decision makers need to be kept honest about their funding while administrators and educators and communities have the freedom to innovate. One final thought. The forces for change and the expense of tech pushes us to reveal what we really believe education look, should look like. It's an ongoing theme of mine that the stress brought about by subjects like BYOD isn't all about technology in the classroom as much as it's an opportunity for us to show what we really believe education should look like. I'm in favor of educators coming up with innovative ways to, make, to meet their students' needs using whatever means necessary. Uh.